time-lapse photography is amazing when you think about it. Right now, you are watching single still images put into a 30 frame per second video. Time-lapse videos is the only art form where you actually create a video from images. And before we actually start this video, there is a Black Friday special. I'm actually offering up to 50% off on all my courses. So check the link in the description below because it's only for a few days. If you're new on this channel, my name is Emmerich. I have been shooting time-lapse videos for over 11 years now, pretty much eight years professionally. And I now have a portfolio of over 13,000, nope, not that much. 1300 time-lapse videos from all around the US. I have a few in Paris, I have a few in Montreal, but right now it's mostly American cities. I have day time-lapses, night time-lapses, dead to night, hyperlapse videos, drone hyperlapse, motion control. Every single type of time-lapse videos I have in my portfolio. Every time I shoot a time-lapse, it's minimum 300 photos, unless it's an hyperlapse, but I shoot time-lapse video 95% of the time, and every time I capture a time-lapse, it's minimum a 10 second long video. So since I'm working at 30 frames per second, I have to capture 300 frames. So every time I capture a time-lapse, it's minimum 300 images. If I shoot a dead to night time-lapse, it can go up to eight, 900 photos. Sometimes in, in some actually rare occasions, I can go all the way to 2000 images for a time-lapse. It's usually the case when I'm shooting something and I don't know uh, when it's gonna end. And I'm shooting you know, with a one or two second interval. Uh, it was the case with the bridge lift time-lapse. I ended up with like 1600 images for a time-lapse, but we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't want to miss the action. So when you shoot at one frame per second, it goes up really quickly. So I have two main cameras today in the 2022, 2023. I have my 5D Mark III right here that I actually got in March, 2017. And I have my main camera today, the 5D Mark IV by Canon. It is now my main camera. If I have two cameras, it's gonna be the best shot. It's gonna be the 5D Mark IV. If I have only one camera I wanna take for a, tri for a trip, for example, it's gonna be the 5D Mark IV. When I travel right now, I like taking only one camera and I only take the 5D Mark IV. In this video, I'm gonna reveal shutter count. Yes, um, I haven't checked my shutter count in over two years, um, so I don't know what my shutter count is today. I mean, the shutter count with those two cameras. I actually asked you on Instagram, Emmerich Timelapse, what do you guys think the shutter counts of my cameras are? 50% of you guys say it will be between 200 and 500,000 images, and almost 40% of you guys say 1 million photos or more. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's just go check it out. Let's start by the 5D Mark III. I think that's the cable I need. 5D Mark III, I need to connect the USB cable right here. All right, here it is. Wow, okay. 316,239 images for the Canon 5D Mark III. It's not bad, that's, that's not bad. I was expecting much more. The shutter wear is 211%. Basically what that means is Canon is always saying like, okay, 150,000 images is like the maximum you can take with this camera before you actually need to, you know, change the shutter. Why would I do this? It's still working. Like for me, the camera is a car. If you take care of your car, you're gonna go hundred and hundred of thousands of miles. Well, same thing with the camera. You can take hundreds of thousands of images. 316,000 and I'm still using it today. I'm still capturing very sharp images. For now, I'm pretty happy with this camera and I'm gonna keep it until it dies. Let's check now the 5D Mark IV. Oh, that was fast. 254,414 images. All right. It's not, it's not as much as I was, as I imagined. I was expecting more. I guess it kind of makes sense because since 2019, 2020, I really haven't been shooting that much. You know, I moved to Atlanta. When I was in Atlanta in 2019, 2020, I probably shot three or four times in a year. So it's not much. I started shooting more recently with my workshops in New York City and Chicago. And I had like a five day, four day job a couple months ago where I was shooting for you know, four days with three different cameras, over a hundred time lapses. So I think it's not as high as I imagined for the only reason that, yeah, I had this pretty much two year break, um, 2019, 2020, 2020, because of COVID. And I was tired of shooting. I was tired of capturing time lapses. I needed a break. 
and now I'm slowly starting to get back into it. But I still shoot less in 2022 because I already shot pretty much everything, <laughs> especially in LA. I have over a thousand time lapses in LA. I have sunrise, sunset of every single angle you can imagine in LA. I'm shooting less, but I'm shooting better quality contents nah, in 2022. And this is why the shutter count is not as high as you guys probably imagine. You know, 40% of you thought it was over a million, but it's not. I'm not even, I'm like 600,000 with those two right here. Not even a million with the two cameras. So I had people ask me the question, does time-lapse photography kind of damage, um, you know, the shutter and the mirror inside a DSL camera? Like, obviously you're using your camera, anything can happen. But it's not because you're shooting a time-lapse that there is more risk of failing, of the camera failing. There's probably more risk since you're capturing more images. So if it's going to fail, it might fail sooner than if you were, I don't know, a wedding photographer, for example, or portrait photographer, obviously. I have a friend of mine, he reached like 400,000 images with his Canon 5D Mark IV, and it was like two years ago. If he still has the camera, it's probably more than this. And I've heard cameras, especially Canon cameras, go up to a million images with no problem. At some point, I will update my cameras to mirrorless cameras when I can. Right now, first of all, I can't afford it. Why would I change two cameras that work fine? They work properly. Here is the, the last few time lapses I captured. You couldn't tell if it was like a mirrorless, you know, from, you know, 2019 or a 5D Mark III or Mark IV from 10 years ago. You know, if you know what you're doing, if you know how to use your camera gear, there's also a lot of post-production that goes into it, you know, but gear doesn't matter that much. It's what you do with it. Everyone's telling you this. It's kind of true, you know, I'm still shooting with very old, not very old, old cameras, and I can still produce amazing contents and still have amazing jobs, you know, with those two cameras. Yes, since all the brands nowadays are focusing more on mirrorless cameras, I probably will have to switch to mirrorless at some point. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe, please. It helps. And then I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.